ITR Boxing. You heard it here first. Pretty cool videos. And I heard they're also in HD. ITRboxing.com. And I saw a lot of really good guys. Their careers just completely end there. I saw guys move out of the state so they didn't have to have a conversation with the coaches as to why they were no longer happy there at the gym. Uh, yeah, it, it's the dynamic of the whole gym. It, it was difficult times. And so much, I even back in my the gym that I started at, Straight Blast Gym, the reason why I ended up leaving that gym was and I mentioned the head coach there was an unpleasant person. He wanted to be the, the gym superstar without ever fighting. And, you know, he was good. Six foot eight could be, depending on the day, 240, 260, 225. And I ended up fighting a guy by the name of Mike Whitehead here in Portland, an okay. amateur fight. And it was supposed to be a 15 minute first round, which is bad enough. And then That's a five-minute five intense. That's pretty five intense. Overtime. Yeah. And I didn't even know who Mike Whitehead was at the time. He was the third-ranked wrestler in his weight division in the nation, and I had no idea. And I had just knocked out one of his training partners a week or two before. So it's a great. So match. he knew. He knew about me. I didn't know about him. A referee looks at me and says, "Are you ready?" And I nod my. Now, the referee looks at Mike and says, are you ready? And Mike says, yes, and runs across the ring. He looks at me and says, are you ready? And I go, what the hell? And Mike is on me. He's got me in the corner of the ring. This wasn't a cage. Pick me up and slam me down. And this happened several times throughout the fight. So it, I would get him in a triangle. He would shove me through the ropes and punch me through the ropes. And the referee would stop, break, okay, move back to the center, uh, Mike get back down the triangle and Mike would look at him and go, no, I'm not going to do that. You go get back down in the triangle. No. And the referee would look at me and go, well, Nate, stand back up. I should mention that the referee, the judges and the timekeeper were all chosen out of the crowd. They were people that showed up to watch the fight. They were friends with the promoter and he didn't have any of those people. So he's like, Hey, this referee shirt will fit you. How about you wear it? And so we'd get stood back up again and he'd look at Mike and say, are you ready? And Mike would run across the ring and grab me. And the timekeeper bumped the clock at the start of the fight. The first round went for 22 minutes. Which and then that's we intense. To... Like that is crazy. It was brutal. And it was, it was a jail son and holds fights there now in a cage. It's very well professionally done. But back in my day, I remember I'm getting punched in the face on the mat and there's a woman sitting right next to the ring, smoking, pounding on the mat right next to my head going, beat his ass. And this fight was so crazy. So finally we get him to stay in his corner and we meet in the corner. He shoots on me and I finally sprawl. I end up taking his back and I'm hitting him in the ribs literally for five minutes because this is a 22 minute round. He has his hand on the outside of the ring and he's trying to pull himself out of the ring underneath the ropes as his corner is instructing him to do. And the referee is just standing there watching the whole thing. So I sit up, I land a big shot, grab the rope and start pulling him back into the ring so he can't escape. The referee starts yelling at me for holding on to the rope. So I start yelling at the ref like, do your goddamn job. He's trying to escape. I'm here fighting. You do it. And I turn around and I hit Mike and we just keep going at it. Years. So, so the, the, the end of the fight, what I was told by one of the judges was the promoter came up to them and said, okay, how'd you score this fight? Who won? And the judge goes, we don't know what we're doing. We don't know how to, how do you score a war like that? We don't know if it was Mike and the promoter went, Mike, got it went into the ring, announced, Mike Whitehead wins the fight. So this was my first loss and I was just devastated. Fast forward a few years from there, I met some other fights and I see Mike Whitehead with his whole crew there and they're kind of pointing at me and laughing. And I walk up to him and I'm like, guys, all right, what's the joke? And they go, you remember that time Mike was trying to crawl out of the ring and you hit him and then you got in an argument with the ref and you hit him again, you kept on fighting? I'm like, yeah. You knocked him out. 
He was unconscious. We have it on tape. He was asleep. And then you hit him again and he woke up and you kept on fighting. So I have overturned that loss. And I call it a victory for myself. I don't even care if Mike does now or not. He's, he's good people. But so that was a Saturday night. Six days later, I'm at Straight Blast Gym on a Friday night. And, and let me clarify. So while I'm still in the ring, still sweaty and bloody, I look at this coach, Matt Thornton from Straight Blast Gym, and I said, I just proved I will fight till I have nothing left. You cannot make me any tougher. You need to make me better. And he looks at me and he says, all right, I will. So six days later, we're in the gym Friday night, sparring six days after this brutal war. And again, he's six foot eight. I have T-Rex arms at six foot tall. I have 72 I do and too. A half inch reach. I'm shorter than it's you, but ridiculous. I got the T-Rex arms. Like I got like a, like a flyweight's arms band is mm -hmm. annoying. It's ridiculous. And we have the uh, leaf blowers on the roof here in case you're here and something. I don't but, worry about it. <laughs> But so I'm staying out at his range and I'm trying to work on slipping these jabs and crosses because that's totally new to me. And I don't know how to do that. And I clearly showed that in the last weekend. And he just starts teeing off on me, throwing bombs. And I should also mention that around this time I had picked up a copy of the Nevada State Athletic Commission book on boxing. And I was reading this and I was like, wait a minute. So these professional boxers, they spar maybe once a week. They work on their head movement, slipping and hitting focus mitts. That's completely the opposite of what I was told. I was told you get the basics down, then you just beat the crap out of each other. Why would you hit mitts since it's not realistic? And so reading this kind of opened my mind and then something else it said was basically, you're not trying to hurt each other in practice. You're saving that for the fights. So I went out and I bought 20 ounce sparring gloves, big pillows. Yeah. I was the only one that bought 20 ounce sparring gloves. Thornton wore eights or tens bag gloves designed to protect his hands. So he's teeing off on me with these bag gloves and I throw a big right hand, hit him with my pillow, throw him up against the wall and I go, I don't know what your problem is, but I'm an actual fighter. I'm fighting and I need to get better at that. I'm not trying to be a gym superstar. And you're just trying to knock me out to make yourself feel better. And he looks at me and he says, well, the problem with you is you're no good and you never will be. So I'm just using you to make myself better. And I feel like I should have thanked him at the time because I finally knew who he was as a coach. And that was the last time we ever trained together.